Hello everyone, this is Jonah from Wright River Rails, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to weather a faded early BNSF ES44AC. This model here is a, one of the newer run CL Trains models, and it is fresh from the factory, like I've got it here, and then we're going to turn it into an old beat up faded one like this. These units have always been interesting to weather to me, just because the paint is a lot faded and splotchy on these compared to some of the newer GVOs, as they've been around a lot longer. And in cold service, they get all kinds of burn marks, cold dust all over them. This is a pretty neat engine to try modeling. This engine is mostly stock. There's a couple things I've done to it since I got it. I added a KD-118s, and I've also taken the cab off and added some cab trash on the cab interior, and I've also painted the window gaskets black. This can be done just by removing the cab using the two screws under the shell and gently rocking it back and forth until the cab releases from the shell and comes off. One thing to note is uh, to remove some of the front handrails before you do this because they are attached to the cab and could break if you forget to remove them. And the cab trash is just regular old printer paper that I've used an X-Acto knife and cut to kind of look like pieces of paper and then glued them to the cab interior. So starting off, we'll need to remove the stock numbers on the locomotive. So to do this, I'm just using Microsol, and then I take some cut-up pieces of paper towels, get them nice and wet, and then just lay them over the top of the numbers on the engine. And you'll want to let these soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. Seems like scale trains lettering comes off easier than most other manufacturers, so they may release within 5 minutes, but usually it's good just to leave them for about 10-20 minutes. And while the numbers are soaking in the Microsol, I'm going to go ahead and paint the number boards black. This particular unit has lighted number boards, but I'm just going to paint over those for now. Usually I just don't like how they look anyways, and trying to get black number board decals to actually light up realistically is pretty challenging and usually doesn't end up looking that well, so I'm just going to turn them off for now. And after about 20 minutes, I'll go ahead and remove the paper towels and just kind of wipe up the excess microsol. Then I'll just take a piece of scotch tape and rub it in real good on top of the numbers and then peel it off and usually they all peel off with the tape. Sometimes you have to go back and do it a couple more times. It just it varies from engine to engine. The primary method in weathering the smoke motive that I'm going to be using is kind of what I call uh, color transitioning. This is a technique I've learned over the years by a few different modelers and I've grown to really like it and it's probably my number one preferred technique for fading any kind of model. But to start off, I'm going to be using some cheap craft acrylic paints and thinning them down with water. It's pretty important to get the mixture just right, and it takes some trial and error. You don't want the paint too thin to where it just runs, but you also don't want it too thick to where it just blobs up on the engine and doesn't actually blend into the existing paint. And to do this, just get a little bit on the brush and then apply it to the engine. I'm going to rub it in real nice and do it in thin layers. The thin layers part's important to cut down on brush strokes. And the nice thing about watered down acrylic paint is when the paint, while the paint dries, the brush strokes just kind of disappear. And so I keep rubbing it in and going over it in small thin layers. And as you do the layers, you can kind of see the color starting to build up on the orange. This is important, especially if you're doing a unit that has sections that are different levels of fades, this comes in handy quite a bit because you can build up the color more in certain areas to make the fade a little bit brighter and darker in other areas. And I did want to mention this video was several hours of work, just kind of spliced down in about half an hour. And I'll try to explain everything I'm doing the best I can.
Usually I'll avoid painting directly on the vents just to avoid getting any paint blobbing up in the see-through section. And as the paint dries, you can continue putting more layers on top of it to kind of vary the color. This particular engine's pretty faded, so I'm doing a decent amount of layers on this one just to transition the orange into that lighter faded look. Here you can see the color starting to build up more and more as I keep applying more layers to the model. And then here you can kind of see the difference between the now faded orange and then the original stock orange from the factory. Here I'm just applying a little bit more to the middle section of the locomotive to kind of build up that orange a little bit more. And then you'll just kind of repeat this same method on all sides of the locomotive, like up here on the front, using a fine tip brush to work it in and around the windows and number boards and try not to get any paint on any of the other parts. And now that the orange is done, I'm going to go ahead and change over to the stripes. And to do this, I'm just using various mixtures of white and yellow to create a faded look on the stripes. And I'll just go over the top of them and vary it in certain spots to get just kind of different shades on the stripes, like the prototype. You don't have to worry about if it gets on any black lines or anything. We can go fix this later. It's just best to try to avoid getting it on the faded orange. And now that that layer is kind of dried, I'm going to go in with some more more of a white color and just kind of put it in certain areas on the stripes where the prototype has it more faded than other parts. Here you can kind of see how the stripes are starting to look faded as well as the orange on all sides of the model. And now I'm going to go back and remove the paint from the lettering on the locomotive. I'm just using a dampened toothpick to do this and just kind of scratching away at the paint as it comes off. And you want to be careful when doing this because sometimes the paint on the letters and little labels and whatnot are pretty delicate and can tear off if you do it too hard. And then now it's time to fade the black a little bit. And I'm just using kind of a mixture of black and gray for this. The black on these isn't too faded, but it's definitely noticeable, so I'm just going over the top and all the sides just to make sure I get most of the areas. The nice thing about black paint is it blends in pretty well. And as the paint dries, it'll kind of shift it to more of a lighter tone. I'm going to add a little bit of black to the logo, just to kind of make that look a little bit faded and match the rest of the black as well. And now that the basic color transitioning is finished, I'm going to go ahead and spray a layer of clear coat on the model. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and mask off the windows with some Tamiya tape. And for the front of the cab, I'm just going to thread some strips of paper in between the windshield wipers to mask off the windows.
Next I'm going to do is going to go ahead and apply the number decals to the model. These are ones I just print myself. And I usually let these soak for a few minutes or so and then take them back out of the water and lay them onto the model. And I'll just use some little tweezers here to kind of move the number to where I want it to. Sometimes I have to add a little bit more water to get to slide well. And then once it's in position, I'll just take a Q-tip and roll it across the numbers to squeeze out the excess water. And then take a brush and add a little bit of microsaw on the top of the decal. This will help blend it into the locomotive. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and paint on the burn mark that this locomotive has. The prototype has a very interesting burn mark and I definitely want to try to recreate it as accurately as I can. So I'm just using various colors of acrylic paint with a super fine brush just to kind of paint the burn mark on. I'm starting with some just light gray and filling it in where needed. It's pretty important just to kind of use um, small amounts of paint and rub it in well just to kind of cut down on the roughness and make it a much smoother finish. With most of the gray done, I'm going to go ahead and move over and start applying black where it needs to go. And then with the black on, I'm going to take a little bit of some watered down yellow paint and just kind of go over the tops of some of the black and whatnot. Just kind of add in the weird colors that this burn mark has. And if you get a little bit of paint where you don't want it, don't have to worry about that. You can just come back with a toothpick and just kind of shape the lines and stuff to a little sharper to how you need them to look like. And with the burn mark done, here's a look at kind of what the prototype one looks like. And I am very happy with how this looks. And with that done, I'm going to go ahead and start working on making the black look a little bit more faded and dirty. I'm just using mixtures of gray and white on top of the nose here just to kind of get it looking similar to what the prototype ones do. Now I'm going to use some light gray and just kind of paint it along the anti-skid walkway that goes down the roofs of the locomotives here. And it's pretty bright for now, but I'm going to go back up with a layer of black later and fix that. And now that that's dried, I'm just going to take some black again and go over the top of the layer I just put on. And what this will do is kind of blend it into the black better and make it not so bright. Next, I'm going to take some grayish brown and apply this to all the walkways and steps of the model. This creates a nice dirty look and will give something for the powders to stick to later. While that dries, I'm going to go ahead and paint the vents on the radiator section of the model. For this, I'm just using a little bit thinned down 
black acrylic paint, a thin brush, and just going along the edges and then filling in the middle and doing that on each vent. Another way you can do this is with a Sharpie on scale trans models, but for this particular one, I'm just going to use acrylic paint instead. And then I'll just take a toothpick and just kind of rub off any paint that may have gone outside the vents. And with that done, I'm going to go ahead and airbrush the underframe of the model. I'm going to be using a mixture of tan for this. And I'll just be going in light layers across the underframe of the model. And sorry if it's a bit hard to see. I don't have a very good airbrush set up right now. So I'm just kind of working with what I've got. We just kind of go across the trucks and light layers until it builds up to how I want it to look. I'll also go across the fuel tank too. And this works especially well for getting dirt and grime up under the plow and whatnot, underframe areas of the model that's harder to get with paint or powders. The airbrush paint also provides a good base for weathering powders to stick to. Now I'm going to replicate the burned off paint that's on top of the radiators in most of these units. The paint just turns more of a bright white, light gray color. I'm just using watered down light gray paint for this. You want to be careful about not making the paint too thin for this, as it'll start having trouble sticking to the vents and just seep under the radiator instead. And now I'm going to do what's called a pin wash along the sides of the model. I'm going to be taking some super thin down black paint and just working it into all the nooks and crannies and seams between the doors and anything along the shell. And it'll just kind of fill in and replicate the dirt and grime that gets in between all the panels. Generally, the paint will go, won't go outside of these lines if it's thin enough. But if it does, you can just use a Q-tip and go back over it. And, and when the pin will wash done, I'm going to go ahead and start using some weathering powders. These ones are by Monroe Models. And these are the colors I generally use. The primary ones I'll be using for this locomotive are dark earth and grimy black. And I'll start off by just applying some heavy powder to the trucks, just trying to darken up a little bit and highlight all the various lines and things in the trucks. This is a very important step for if you're airbrushing any model, as if you don't do this, the paint tends to look very flat. And I'll just go over the fuel tank and trucks until I'm fairly satisfied how that looks, and then start going along kind of the frame of the model, building that up. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black and just kind of go across the whole model, and this will kind of get into any more panels and body lines that I may have missed with the pin wash and just kind of blend it all together. And the black powder also works well for replicating the coal dust that's usually on the cabs and sides of the locomotives. It'll also make some fuel spill marks and whatnot on the fuel tank. And I'll go over all the vents again with black powder. This will blend in the paint and just kind of make it look a lot better. And I'll do the same steps on the other side of the model.
Now I'll go ahead and apply some powder to the front of the locomotive. It's working in and around the plow under the anti-climber. And then I'll try to make some cold dust on the nose of the model. Up here, just kind of getting the roof a little bit dirtier, going over the PTC equipment. And I'll apply a little bit of white powder to the radiator here, just kind of seeing if it blends in the paint. It's also important to go over the walkways and steps with powder to blend in the layer of paint we put on earlier. And I'll go ahead and put the handrails back on and I'll just go over these with a layer of powder, just kind of blend them in and the rest of the model. I'm gonna also gonna repaint the couplers, just kind of make them stand out a little bit more now that they're all the same color as the frame. I'll do this on the front and back of the model. And now that the engine's all weathered up, I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the masking tape and stuff on the windows and headlights. And that leaves us with just one last step, and that's painting the wheels. And to paint the wheels, I usually just put the model on a straight piece of track with a thumbtack in front of it, and then run it at kind of a slow speed, and just take a brush and apply some paint to the wheels as they're spinning. And this just helps work it in and make it nice and even without having to take the truck side frames off. And with the model finally all finished up, here's some pictures of it out in the sun. This is by far my favorite technique for weathering locomotives, and I think it just really can make something fantastic that looks just like the prototype. I hope this video was helpful to any of y'all that were hoping to learn how to weather a locomotive like this, and I'm glad I was able to share my techniques with y'all. But anyways, I hope y'all have enjoyed, and I will see you next time.